Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Mystical. Today I am bringing you a 10.2 guide for Miss Weaver Solo Shuffle. You're going to learn everything from stats to rotation to how to juke, everything you need to know to be successful in Solo Shuffle. And with that said, let's jump right into the video. So why you should play Miss Weaver just in general. I think Miss Weaver is by far the most fun spec in the game. When it comes to healing, I think you can be successful by learning cast and Miss Weaver and Fist Weaving. I have a Fist Weaving guide I'll put up in the corner here. That is also good for Solo Shuffle and Arena. And I think overall, Miss Weavers just have a lot of healing output and there's no downtime on this healing spec there is there, there is always a global to press you're always trying to min max your either your zen spheres your healing rotation your cc everything and i love it so much the mobility on miss weaver is the best mobility in the game and i love it i freaking love it so that's why i play miss weaver that's why i encourage people to play miss weaver even though we're normally we're not really the most competitive i think there's still chances to shine as a miss weaver in solo shuffle and in arena let's start with races i will start with the alliance races so Again, the meta is different in Solo Shuffle than it is in normal arena because you can see any spec in Solo Shuffle. So what you're looking for when it comes to races is the best overall race and not just what meta in our, the meta in arena is. So I would say your your go-to should be either Night Elf or Gnome on the Alliance side, in my opinion. Gnome, really good because Balanced Druids, they're going to be pretty good. So you can get out of root beams. It saves up a PvP slot, which is amazing. Uh, also, Windwalkers, DKs, Demon Hunters, everything with a slow Frost Mages as well. You're able to Gnome Ratio out with Escape Artist, and it just saves you an extra bun, which is amazing. So that's why I like Gnome. You also get a little bit extra mana with uh, one of their passives. So I think that that's a really good talent to have, but it doesn't really matter that much. I just think Gnome is really good for being able to kite if teams try to swap to you or if you're playing against a Boomer with root beam. There's also Night Elf, and this one might be more useful just in general arena in Solo Shuffle and normal arena. You get Shadow Meld, which makes you turn stealth, and you could just sit there if you don't have dots on you. Or if you do have dots on you, that's fine. You It'll stop any cast at CC on you or cast at spells. So if you see any damage incoming or like a polymorph incoming on you, you could Shadow Meld and completely negate it. If teams also try to swap to you, it will detarget you from them so it gives you like a like a half a second a second before teams can click on you again and give you a chance to stay alive so i think night elf is overall the most well-rounded race and if you're looking at mid max i would recommend probably night elf over gnome i think gnome has some niche things that you can do but the possibilities for night elf are endless and there's a lot of potential for using shadow build an honorable mention for the alliance races are Dwarf and Dark Iron Dwarf. It's not that they're bad, it's just I don't think they're as useful unless there are certain meta classes or specs that are just overwhelming Soul Shuffle. So those specs are Assassination Rogue, Feral Druid, Affliction Warlock. Those are three specs because these races are able to dispel themselves of curses, magical effects, and bleeds. So that's really, really good because monks can't dispel curses. So it's really, really good to have a little curse dispel, dispel for yourself. They also do dispel root beam, but it's on a two minute cooldown and gnome is a one minute cooldown. So it lines up with the root beam from balanced druids. For horde, your choices are orc or undead and orc used to be good, but it was nerfed by 50% in PVP. So the sun reduction that you normally get from hardiness was dropped from 20% to 10%. I don't see a lot of use for it. A lot of teams don't really, you know, train healers at all. And a lot of them don't try to swap to the misweaver. So, I think Orc is kind of a waste of a race. I don't think you get much value out of Hardiness, but I do think that Undead, hands down, is the best race to play out of Alliance and Horde because you get Will of the Forsaken, which gets you out of Fears. This applies to Sleepwalk from Evokers. There's Augmentation Evokers everywhere, so you're going to get some value out of it no matter what. Fears from Priests, Warlocks, and Warriors. So this gives you essentially a second Trinket which is very important in Solo Shuffle because we do have a minute and a half cooldown on Trinket now, but this gives you a second Trinket. You can either Will and then Trinket the next CC on you or Trinket and then use Will. Either one is fine, but I think Undead, hands down, is the best race you can play in Shuffle, especially for Horde. And if you're going to choose between Alliance, it's either Gnome or Night Elf. Next, you probably want to know what stats you need on your gear. I would recommend going Haste, Verse, Mastery, Crit. You don't really want crit on any of your gear, but I would highly recommend going heavy haste and verse. I go as much haste as I can. I have about 36% haste, which is probably overkill, but I do 36% 36% haste, 28% versatility. It's worked for me. I think it's fantastic. Your haste reduces the cooldown on your GCD. So your GCD, you're able to kind of just cheese a little bit and it makes it a lot easier to juke people getting kicked in solo shuffle and falling behind on a miss weaver is rough so you want to be able to just have your gcd super fast and be able to get those those hots out 
before you get put into CC or if people try to interrupt you. And then the extra versatility helps you stay alive, which is great. Mastery is okay. I have 67% haste or 67% mastery. It's okay. The healing breakdown, it's like maybe eight or nine on my healing, but you definitely want just haste verse on all of your gear. As far as tier set goes, I would recommend going two and four set. For Mistweaver, especially in Shuffle, you're going to get a lot of value. You're two set. Whenever you apply Renewing Mist to somebody, you're going to put a Chi Harmony buff on them, increasing the healing I take from you by 50%, and PvP is 25%. But still, 25% extra healing is absolutely insane. Imagine if they just had a patch where they just said all the healings increased by 25%. You would think that that's pretty broken, and that's because of this. So <laughs> our two set is crazy good. It's also really, really amazing when because it, it works with Rapid Diffusion. So you're going to be able to have a ton of Renewing Mist out on ton of the chi harmony buff going out and then you're also going to want the four set the four set is a little bit more passive where you're you don't really need to think about it too much whenever you have put chi harmony on somebody with a new mist 20 percent of the healing you do to them is stored and then once chi harmony expires it heals anybody that has your new mist on them essentially what you want to do is you want to keep renewing mist on everybody just you always will constantly want to have renewing mist um applied to everybody as much as possible and just don't let it fall off that way you get healing from your two set and then you get the aoe healing from your four set as far as what slots you want to have your set on i would go helm shoulders chest and gloves drop the legs i don't think crit or mastery is essential for solo shuffle so i would drop the legs and get the conquest legs that are haste verse and that way you have better stats the helm has crit verse the shoulders have haste mastery chest is haste verse and the gloves are crit verse so not ideal stats a lot of crit for some reason i guess they need to also you know gear for pve players but in general you do want the four set and you want it on those four slots you do have a few options when it comes to embellishments the n number one mandatory one is you definitely want precog so this makes it so when you juke somebody you get precog and you're immune to cc interrupts and pushbacks for four seconds this is crucial for misweavers and especially in solo shuffle if you can get a juke normally i cast a shaylun's gift and i'll talk about shaylun's gift later but shaylun's gift is a really good heal you get really good buffs from it too so if you can get precog that's amazing as far as your second one you can either go with blue silken lining which gives you mastery when you're above 90 percent health which is good extra mastery again isn't mandatory but mastery is bonus healing which is fantastic or you can go with the verdant tether i believe it's called it's the new embellishment that ad was added in 10.2 this makes it so your healing spells have a chance to give your teammates versatility, which I think is really, really good. Um, I would recommend probably playing around with that. I wasn't able to play, play around with it much on beta, but I think it's a really solid option. I'll keep updates in the um, comments below. So if I change my mind or anything, I will do that. But I would say in general, I would go with Precog and I would go with the Verdant Tether for the extra versatility for yourself and your teammates. These are the talents I run every single shuffle, and I will explain some that I change. There really isn't much that changes. I do, on the left-hand side, just go straight down and get Statue. Statue just got buffed, so really good healing from there. Only one point for Escape from Reality now, which is fantastic. So that's kind of a bit of a buff. I do get the Fuse Magic and Dampen Harm for the extra defensives. I guess the one talent you can kind of drop, or if you want to make it stronger, you can go Iron Shell Brew for Fort Brew. Um, I've never had a shuffle go four minutes long. Not not one. So the cooldown reduction on Fort Brew, is it, it does nothing. It does absolutely nothing. Uh, you could go for the stronger Fort Brew. That way, you know, later in dampening, if your teams are starting to maybe swap to you or whatever, you can just press Fort Brew and hopefully stay alive. So you could run that. There really isn't any other spot. You could do extra damage. So what I tend to do is if I'm playing against a Resto Shaman, what I'll do is I'll actually drop a point from Grace of the Crane and go and put it into Fast Feet. And what I'll try to do is I will try to kill their totems as fast as I can. Their Healing Stream totems, their Healing Tide totems, Earth Grab totem, any totem that they have, I am going to try to kill. It just helps with reducing their healing, reducing the slows. Everything keeps uptime for my teammates. So that's what i tend to do but if you're not playing against a resto shaman or like an ellie shaman or like you know kill groundings and stuff like that it's not really that that big a deal so this is normally what i'll play against non-resto shamans on the right hand side because i'm running haste i want to get as much value out of my haunts as possible so what i do is i play you know normal normal talents up top get your life cocoon get your restoral it's fantastic you want to go down here you want to get your common coalescence to make your life cocoon massive this is very important uh, Mist, of, Mist of Life, of course, is good. And then you want Chrysalis for the shorter life cocoon. And on the right-hand side, I will go, I'll get my Yulon. I'll get the short Yulon, and I'll get Cloud of Focus. Cloud of Focus is the bread and butter of Cast and Mistweaver, whether it's normal arena or not. It's very important. And then I'm, all my talents are right down here. So I'm going to go. I'm gonna get Shaylun's Gift. I'm going to get Shao Lessons, which gives you a buff whenever you 
you Shailun's Gift, and then I'm going to get Legacy of the Wisdom to reduce the cast time on it, and so it heals more. This will also heal pets now, which is really great. So it'll heal your teammates, and then heal pets if they're starting to die. And then, very important is Peaceful Mending. So this makes it so whoever you're targeting with Soothing Mist, that person gets 50% more healing from your Enveloping Mist and Renewing Mist. And this applies to your statue Soothing Mist. So what you can do is you can Soothing Mist somebody, and I'll, I'll show you. It's a little trick. I don't know if many people use it but i will i'll show you what i do you soothing miss somebody and this will put the buff on them or it's not a buff but it's a passive and you what you can do is you get that bonus healing if you're done focusing enveloping mist that enveloping mist is going to heal for more because the soothing mist is channeling on that target i'll show you some little things you can do with that and then you're going to get tier of mourning which just makes it so your vivify cleave healing heals for more and then has a chance to make enveloping mist spread your renewing mist one very important talent that just got buffed and you're going to want to keep this in mind is invigorating mists so this makes it so whenever you vivify somebody anyone with renewing mist on them gets healed so when you, if you have renewing mist here renewing mist here and i healed this guy right here these two get healed because they have renewing mist on them and they're gonna you're gonna want to take advantage of that with your four set because you're gonna have renewing mist on everybody it's gonna be a lot of healing and then I mentioned this earlier, but Rapid Diffusion, whenever you use Rising Sun Kick or Enveloping Mist, it applies Renewing Mist for six seconds on an ally. So all of these HOTs, all, all of these, these modifiers on your HOTs, you know, the, the extra healing from Peaceful Mending, the Rapid Diffusion putting Renewing Mist on people, the extra healing from Invigorating Mist, the extra healing from Tear of Mourning, all of that healing is just so much stronger when you stack haste, and that's why I run it. And let me just show you how strong your HOTs are. And here is an example of a Shuffle, this is the healing from my enveloping mist. It is freaking insane. All you do is you envelop a mist, you apply your renewing mist through it with the rapid diffusion, and then you have the overflowing mist, which is this talent right here, um, which makes it so your enveloping mist heals the target for 2% of the max health whenever they take damage. But this is my healing breakdown pretty much every game. You can see how strong haste makes enveloping mist because enveloping mist is like one of the best hots in the game. Next up, mist weavers do suffer from success when it comes to PvP talents. We have a lot of good options. I'm going to show you what I run for certain things. I, it, there's no cookie cutter way because it is sh solo shuffle. So you're going to be playing against comps you've never seen before. I've played against enhanced arcane mage. I don't know what to play for now. It's crazy. So I would say first off, almost a mandatory talent. Borderline mandatory is Peace Weaver. Peace Weaver is so good. And you have to think, this isn't normal arena. This is solo shuffle. Dampening is higher. So it's really important because what Peace Weaver does is it re reduces the cooldown of your Restoral or Revival by 50%. So it gives you a shorter cooldown and a really good heal. But it also makes your team immune to magical and harmful effects for two seconds, which is so important. That immunity is so good for stopping damage and stopping cc and you could use restore while stunned and they all work together so keep that in mind uh this is really good the later you're going to dampening if you're playing against destro locks shadow priests rep pallies unholy decays anything magical and you're you're able to have restore later in dampening and you're able to recover because you make your team immune it's beautiful so peace weaver is is i would say mandatory i would say peace weaver is is pretty much a mandatory talent that i take pretty much against everything Next up, there are a few options. There's Eminence here. So, the Solo Shuffle isn't as coordinated, but with classes that can set up CC on their own, for example, Hunters, they have Intimidation Stun into Trap. They also have Scatter into Trap. Uh, Pallies have Hodge into Blinding Light or Hodge into Rep. Versus classes like that, I would play Eminence versus it just because they don't need the coordination from their teammates. They're just able to get the CC on their own. So, I think Eminence really, really good for avoiding CC. I don't have issues where teams run at me unless it's like a super meta comp. Like if I'm playing, it's a ret warrior and shuffle. There's a good chance they might try to go me, but they're probably not. So I do sometimes risk it and drop eminence versus that. But I would say eminence is mandatory versus, you know, classes that can CC on their own without coordination from their teammates. Zen focus C. I would say this is mandatory versus anything that has like two range kicks. If you're not playing with casters, I would play Zen focus C. Um, let's just say you're playing, you know, you got in a shuffle round with a Windwalker and Warrior, and you're playing against Mage Lock. It's, it's a no-brainer. You're the only person that they can kick. So Zen Focus T, anything, anytime you're playing with a melee and you're playing against Double Caster with multiple rage interrupts, I'd play Zen Focus T. Disarm, 
is really good versus warriors and marks hunters, rep alleys, anything that can do melee damage and you can stop their damage. I would play grapple weapon. So really good versus marks hunters when they use true shot. Really good versus warriors when they use avatar and they're not blade storming. Anything like that, I would play grapple weapon. And then the final option you have is Zen Sphere. So this is kind of like if no other option is good, play a Zen Sphere. You know, if you don't need to play Zen Focus T or something, you can play Disarm and you don't need to play Zen Focus T and you can use something like this, do it. That's kind of like my last go to is if, if no other talent makes sense, just play Zen Sphere. Before I talk about rotation, I just want to go over and reiterate some important talents. I might have talked about them before, but I just want to let you know just what you should be looking out for when you're healing. First off, Vivacious Vivification, make sure Vivify instant once every 10 seconds. Fantastic, passive to have, just instant Vivify. Beautiful, don't need to cast it. Next, I talked about Invigorating Mist. This is what heals to your teammates that have Renewing Mist on them. If you heal somebody with Renewing Mist, it does double dip. So if you heal somebody with Renewing Mist, they also get healed for that extra healing from Invigorating Mist, which is amazing. Also, that's, again, I'm going to say it a lot. Just make sure you keep Renewing Mist on people. Overflowing Mist I talked about. Cloud of Focus. Again, this is the crutch that Mistweaver stands on. This makes it so whenever you use Enveloping Mist or Vivify, you get a stack of Cloud of Focus. Each stack increases the healing of your Enveloping Mist and Vivify by 15% and reduces their mana cost. So it stacks up two times. So 15% and 30% for each stack. Um, and then obviously it cancels when you stop soothing misting, which is a little sad. And then Shaylin's gift I talked about, Focus Thunder, gives your Thunder Focus T two charges. I'll talk about Thunder Focus T in a bit. And those are pretty much the passives you want to keep in mind. Peaceful Mending, I talked about it. Just make sure you keep your soothing mist on whoever you're healing. And those are the passives and talents you want to keep in mind when you're healing on your Mistweaver. All right, let's talk about the basic healing rotation, just the bare minimum. Renewing Mist out, Statue down. That's important. Also want to make sure when the arena starts, you do put a port down. Port is by far one of your most important talents and very important for it to be successful in shuffle. It helps you avoid damage, helps you avoid CC, and that's what you're trying to do. They're trying to be as annoying as possible, make it so difficult for teams to get to you. So we have a renewing mist out and you're going to, you could just sit here and just, you know, just channel your soothing mist. It's fine. Soothing mist from your statue just got buffed. And I think normal soothing mist also got buffed. So it's fine to just sit here. If no one's taking damage one trick, however, that I want to keep in mind, I just dropped the stacks. If a team, if someone isn't pushing in, like, let's just say someone they're just chilling behind the pillar or whatever, channel your soothing mist on somebody because when you soothing mist and your statue soothing mist you get two stacks of common coalescence every second this is what makes your life cocoon stronger so that means if teams are just sitting behind the pillar and they think they're doing something they're not they're actually making it way better that way when your first life cocoon your is going to be massive like life cocoon right now at 50 stacks absorbs over a million over over a million hp and it's going to get stronger the more health you get as the season goes on so they might think they're doing something they're not so get your statue down, start channeling Soothing Mist on somebody, get your, your Renewing Mist out. And if people just start doing damage, I would just uh, do an instant Vivify, you know, that way you don't get kicked. And then just heal with Vivify. Just You just heal with Vivify, keep your Renewing Mist out, of course. If someone starts taking damage, you're going to want to probably go for an Enveloping Mist. Maybe go for a, uh, a Vivify into an Enveloping Mist. That way you get a stack of Cloud of Focus is perfect. And that way you get the mana reduction, which is really, really important. So... Those are, your, those are the basics of your spells is using your Soothing Mist to make your Vivify and Envelope Mist instant because that's what makes it instant. Otherwise, you have to channel it. And that's not good. Using your Vivify when your teammates are at like, I don't know, like 50 to like 100%, 50 to like 80%. And then using Envelope Mist when someone starts getting a little bit lower. Next up, you want to start using your Thunder Focus T. So Thunder Focus T is, again, it's very crucial to being successful on Mistweaver in general. And it has a lot of a lot of different abilities that you can do. You're primarily going to be focusing on Enveloping Mist and Vivify. So when you use Thunder Focus T and Enveloping Mist, it's going to instantly heal your target and it makes it instant cast. And when you use it on Vivify, it makes it so it costs no mana. So starting with Thunder Focus T and uh, Enveloping Mist, like I said before, Enveloping Mist has a cast time unless you use it with Soothing Mist. If you Soothing Mist, Enveloping Mist, Enveloping Mist is instant. But when you use Thunder Focus T, right, you can Thunder Focus T Enveloping Mist and it's instant. So you don't need to cast it. And don't forget, we have two charges of Thunder Focus T thanks to Focus Thunder, which is fantastic. So technically you have two instant Enveloping Mist, which is amazing. And what you're going to do, you're going to use that when there's interrupts available as well. But for the most part, what you want to do is you want to pay attention to Vivify. So Vivify, Soothing Mist on him, Vivify is instant from Vivacious Vivification. 
And when you use it with Thunder Focus T, it costs no mana. And keep in mind, when you use Vivify, your Cloud of Focus stacks go up. So if you connect the Thunder Focus T with Cloud of Focus, you can do something amazing. Right now, I'm at 100% mana. What you can do, is, and this is this is... This is how you use Thunder Focus T when there's like no kicks available or no CC and you don't need to get any healing out or you need a little healing, but not too much. You can Soothing Mist, Thunder Focus T, Vivify, Vivify. It costs no mana. I get two stacks of Cloud Focus and then Enveloping Mist. And so for 2% of your mana, you just did probably the, the most healing you can do. You maximize your Cloud of Focus stacks. You maximize your mana because your Vivify costs no mana with Thunder Focus T. And you got a really juicy Enveloping Mist that costs 30% less mana and does 30% more healing. Uh, which is amazing. And of course, don't forget the passive from Peaceful Mending. That makes your Enveloping Mist heal for more on targets with Soothing Mist on them. And because Statue counts as that Soothing Mist, let's just say there are kicks available. Here's what you can do. You can make sure your Soothing Mist is healing your target. Just Thunder Focus the Enveloping Mist. That's normally what I do. If there's kicks available, my teammate is like 30, 20, 30% health and they need a big heal. I'll just make sure they got that Soothing Mist, Thunder Focus the Enveloping Mist. They get the hot. It does a ton of healing. It doesn't have the bonus from the Cloud of Focus stacks, but it's still getting the healing from Peaceful Mending, and you're able to just channel and heal as much as you can. The next thing you want to start using is using your Yulon. So Yulon is a woman at cooldown. I haven't really talked about her that much. What she does is you summon her for 12, I think, what is it, like 10 seconds, I think, with this short? 12 seconds. And it will put little cheek cocoons on people from the Celestial Harmony, and she'll also give you another hot. When you use Yulon with Enveloping Mist, uh, she'll put Chi Harmony on people, which makes it so they take 10% more healing from you. And it does it does a certain amount of healing. It doesn't do the most healing. It's not like insane amount of healing. This is Enveloping Breath right here. It's about 10% of your, or it's number 10. It's about 3.5% of your healing, but it is healing. So, and it'll, but most, most importantly is that that target takes 10% more healing from you. So what you're going to do, it's a one minute cooldown. So this is, this is normally the first cooldown I use every single game, by the way, because you can get about three of them in a shuffle round. So... It's, this is what I use if someone starts taking damage. I'll press Yulon, and I'll try to Soothing Mist, Thunder Focus, Vivify into an Enveloping Mist. And you can see there's a third hot here now, which is Enveloping Breath, which is a hot. And then this person's also taking 10% more healing from me. Um, if you press Yulon, and you're about to get put into crowd control, you can definitely use Thunder Focus, Enveloping Mist. One thing I forgot to mention is Enveloping Mist costs 50% less mana while Yulon is active. Enveloping Mist costs 50% less mana when Yulon is active. So for 12 seconds, Enveloping Mist is 50% less mana. So it costs 6,000 mana. That doesn't count with Manatee. And I'll talk about Manatee after this, but that's what I do. I'm normally Yulon. And then if I have to, I'll Thunder Focus the Enveloping Mist just because of the mana reduction. If not, I'll just go for a Thunder Focus T Vivify into an Enveloping Mist. And then it gets the Enveloping Mist gets the bonus healing. And then that mana reduction is like 2,000 mana for one Enveloping Mist. And it's amazing. I just mentioned it, but the new manatee makes it so every time you spend 25,000 mana, you get one stack of manatee. And every time you consume one stack of manatee, you restore 3,000 mana, and we get a one second buff that reduces the mana cost on your spells by 50%. So I'm at 20 stacks right now. This is the max amount that you can get. And I'm just gonna just consume like, you know, I'm just gonna consume 20 stacks. So I'm, I'm consuming them all. You can channel, you know, you can move around with it. It just reduces your mana, your, your movement speed, and I get a 20 second buff that reduces my mana cost by 50%. What you wanna do is if you have Yulon available, you can definitely go for Thunder Focus E, Vivify, Vivify Enveloping Mist, and then look at my Enveloping Mist. It costs 2,100 mana, down from what, 12,000, because all of the modifiers from your Cloud of Focus, your Yulon, and your Manatee, they all stack, every single one of them stacks. So if you're in a pinch and you need to use mana, or if you have Yulon and Thunder Focus T, or Manatee available, that's what you want to do. Normally, what I'll do is I'll use my mana T. I'll get about five or six stacks. I'll consume five, five or six stacks and get the five second buff. And then I'll just do that same rotation. I'll just go for a mana T. And then I'll just Soothing Mist, Thunder Focus, see Vivify, Vivify into an Enveloping Mist. Keep that, make sure that buff is up. And my Enveloping Mist costs like no mana. It, it is amazing. Now, if you don't have Yulon available, that's fine. What I try to do is I always try to mana T before I use an Enveloping Mist at all times you'll never see me get have more than five stacks of manatee what i'll do is if there's just some downtime you know my teammate really isn't dying maybe they're at like 80 percent or something i'll just go for a manatee and i'll go for thunder focus team enveloping mists or vivifies into enveloping mist that way i get the max mana reduction and i'm able to heal 
Um, this also works if you have to use Thunder Focus Team and Velpy Mist. And this is what that looks like. So you see I have two stacks of Manatee. What you can do since Thunder Focus T isn't on the GCD, and this is a little trick that I learned, and I don't know if many people know it, but you can use Thunder Focus T while channeling Manatee. So if you're in a pinch and your teammate is dying, channel your Soothing Mist on your teammate. Manatee, Thunder Focus T, and Velvet Mist. Boom. And you get the mana reduction, the 50% mana reduction on that and Velvet Mist. And it costs, again, it costs like 7k mana, but it's amazing because you just restored 6k mana so it, it's like it costs like 1000 mana for all of that and that's what i do if there's kicks available i don't have yulon but i have thunder focus t and it, this will also work with yulon if there is a kick available as well so if you're just you know using your yulon i'll mana t thunder focus t envelope mist and you it, it that thunder focus that envelope mist gets the mana reduction from both your yulon and your mana t all right and now let's just put it all together you want to put your statue down Make sure you got a port up, no matter where. Whether in the middle of the arena or if it just started, make sure you have a port down. Always stay in range of your port. You want to make sure you put your Zen Sphere on your target or your teammate. Always on your teammate. That's 15% more healing on them. And you're just going to put your new Mist out. That's what you're going to start with. You're going to just start. And if they start taking some damage, we're going to vivify a little bit. You're going to have to move around a lot because a lot of people love to line you. You know, they, they think the pillar, I can heal through it. I can't. Um, but if they're on the move, I will normally just, you know, put a Renewing Mist on them. That way I get some hot going and I'll just start vivifying. If they start taking damage, I'll try, I'll plant my feet, Thunder Focus T, vivify, vivify into an Enveloping Mist. If there's no kicks available, um, it's, it's really, 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 really man efficient, which is great. And let's just say someone, let's just say a mage starts using, you know, combustion or if a warlock just starts doing damage. What I'll normally do is I will put out a Yulon. I'll throw out and enveloping mist that way they get the hot if there's kicks available i was out thunder focusing enveloping mist just because you kind of want that you want that hot out there and you want the man reduction and i'll just instant vivify manatee and i'll just start healing thunder focus t vivify vivify enveloping mist boom just keep doing that over and over again and make sure you keep again they always want to make sure you're doing mist or recharging if teams are starting to maybe swap to me or i'm taking a little bit of damage i'll use expel harm which is a great self heal for you Right around this time, teams are going to try to start to kick you. What you really want to do is not get kicked. You want to juke them. Whenever I have precog, is normally when I go for a Shaylin's gift. I try to Shaylin's gift around five to six stacks. That's 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 the sweet spot of when Shaylin's gift healing is actually pretty solid. It's also a really good AOE heal. So if your team is taking cleave damage, I would also send it then. And that's when I would just use a Shaylin's gift to buy precog, and then I just go back to healing. Use instant your instant vivify from a vicious vivification. Use your Yulon stack manatee here. Thunder Focus T Vivify Vivify into an Enveloping Mist. And you're just you're just doing so much healing. You're also spreading Renewing Mist out because you're using Enveloping Mist so much. And you're just cranking healing with everything with Renewing Mist on them. You're gonna get value out of your instant vivify because you just have Renewing Mist on everybody and you just keep healing. If you need to use Enveloping Mist, use your Manatee. Be healing. If you start taking damage, using Expel Harm on yourself, and you just keep doing that over and over again with your Renewing Mist, Vivify, and Enveloping Mist. Making sure you manage your stacks of Cloud of Focus and Manateeing when you're about to press your enveloping mist. As far as cooldowns go, you have about two or three that you're gonna you really want to make sure you rotate them because dampening really affects mist weavers. You're gonna get to a point, because we have no damage reductions. <laughs> you're gonna get to a point where your healing's just gonna do nothing and you're gonna lose. So Yulon is again, I mentioned it, really important. One minute cooldown, you could use this about two or three times a shuffle. So don't be afraid. The first one, just send it. You know, if someone starts taking damage, you got little cheek cocoons on people, just send it, make sure you get the mana reduction. Heal. If there's kicks available, send the Thunder Focusing and Velvet Mist. As long as Soothing Mist is healing them, you're going to get really good value out of it. And then you're also going to have the mana reduction from your Yulon, which is amazing. If you don't have Yulon, Life Cocoon is massive. This is the one button. You, you cannot waste Life Cocoon. Life Cocoon, even in like 80% dampening, can absorb like 300k damage if you have 50 stacks of Common Coalescence, which isn't hard to stack. So please do not waste your Life Cocoon. It's very important. I if I I'm very confident that we're gonna win a round. If we're at like three minutes into the round and I have life cocoon, I know that we're gonna be okay. Because right now my life cocoon absorbs how much does my life cocoon absorb? 1.4 million damage. And because life cocoon is based off of health, it's only gonna get stronger. Life cocoon is gonna absorb about two million, two million damage. So don't waste it ever. And then you also have restoral. 
So restore is on, on a minute and a half cooldown, and this can be used while stunned. Works with Peace Weaver, so this can be used to immune CC on you if you don't have Trinket or Eminence to avoid CC. It could also be used to avoid damage if you're stunned and you see Chaos Bolts coming in hot. You see, you know, combustion from the mage, anything like that. Send it. You know, it's even really good versus DKs and Pallies because they have magic damage. So use your Storo when you see incoming damage or CC that you can't avoid, and you're trying to just keep your teammates alive. As far as defensives go, you also want to rotate those pretty pretty often. You don't want to waste them. Diffuse magic, good versus magical damage. Really good if you could use it before stun. You could also reverse dots with it. It's really good versus affliction warlocks because you can just reverse their UAs back to them. It does a ton of damage. So use this first. Any magical damage, not just casters, ret, unholy decay, really solid. Dampen harm reduces all damage you take by 20% to 50%. For 10 seconds which larger attacks being reduced by more so the larger attacks really good versus like arms warriors destro locks with chaos bolts anything like that that has like hardening spells marksmanship hunters as well so really really good just to use that it lasts 10 seconds too which is great so try not to overlap these cooldowns they kind of affect different things and then you have fort brew which i mentioned earlier you're going to basically use fort brew once around it's a six minute cooldown. Even with the cooldown reduction, it's a four minute cooldown. I've never had a shuffle round go longer than like three and a half minutes. So you're gonna get one charge of four brew around. Um, use this when you really need it. I use the strong life cocoon or I use the strong four brew just because if I press it, I really want to live. Um, and it lasts 15 seconds. So this increases your health, increases your armor, reduces damage you take. Use this when you're stuck in the middle of a map, you have no trinket, or you, you know, you're about to get stunned and you have no trinket, press it before stun. Hopefully you live. Sometimes, sometimes I don't. And then there's also Expel Harm, which got reworked this patch, as well as Healing Elixirs. These two spells, Healing Elixir is passive. It heals you for 20% of your max health when you drop below 40% health and you have two charges of it, which is great. So you don't really need to think about it. Expel Harm, is also changed you can't use it on your teammates anymore but it's a way stronger heal now i think on average it has healed about 150k health for me without dampening so it'll heal for about like 80 90k in shuffle so not a bad heal but you know it's instant so you know use it when you there's kicks available and you can just press expel harm to heal yourself or if you're starting to get cleaved or if you got dots on you or something like that that's when i use expel harm I want to briefly talk about your mindset and solar shuffle as well. Your your goal as the Mistweaver, again, we're not an aggressive healer. You know, cast a Mistweaver isn't aggressive. Your goal is to avoid as much damage as you can and help your team stay aggressive. That's what you're trying to do. You want to you don't want to push in, but if you see that your team is stormbolting somebody, you kind of want to go in for an in-cap and really try to get that sweep and then pour it out, and then you're out. Because you're trying to avoid as much damage as you can so that no one can swap to you, make it easy for you to to make it easy for them to do damage to you you don't want to do that you want to heal far away but if your team is doing a go you also want to you want to help cc because i don't versus most healers you're not gonna be able to play just 40 yards away you, you're probably gonna have to you're gonna be forced to eventually push out and be more aggressive so just start being aggressive straight off the bat but not too aggressive because then teams can cc you and swap to you so don't, don't be too aggressive but if you could be on a pillar and you can incap somebody you know during a go it's massive like even just an incap you don't need a sweep it's perfect. And if you can leg sweep the DPS and cap the healer, that's even even better. As far as macros go, I don't really have too many macros. I've talked about it before, but I use a lot of arena one, two, three macros because that just works for me. I have it for in cap. I have it for disarm. Life cocoon macro is also really important. This is going to make it so you don't accidentally life cocoon yourself or somebody that doesn't, you know, a non-teammate. If your priest mind controls somebody or if the enemy priest mind controls a teammate, you're not going to accidentally life cocoon, life cocoon yourself. So all these macros are in the discord in the description so just take it they're all yours so i have grapple weapon i've invoked yulon but that's just because i use it with a toy use the life cocoon macro arena 123 kick because you have a kick if you can ever get a kick on cc or a healer it's freaking amazing and that is kind of it i don't really tiger's lust as well for your party members massive you can target your you can use it for i also have tiger's lust for myself because if you can just if you get rooted like barely getting cc'd around the pillar you could just Oh, you can just get around the pillar, which is great. You can avoid it, which is fantastic. But I don't really have too many other macros. Oh, target a target Zen Sphere. I think Zen Sphere, again, when you use it, is really important because not only are you doing more healing to your teammate, your teammates are doing more damage to the enemy. So what this does, and I don't have anybody around targeting anything. No, I don't. I have no one targeting anything. <laughs> but you can put Zen Sphere on your teammate, and then what this macro does is whoever your teammate is targeting, it'll put Zen Sphere on them. So if your teammate is targeting the enemy, 
it will just boom it'll put it'll put send sphere on them that way you don't need to target them repeatedly but that is it for my macros i don't use too many crazy macros there's nothing else that i use that would be beneficial for arena and that's it for the video. Hopefully it was helpful for anyone who might be new to Mistweaver or learning Mistweaver and Shuffle or anyone who's a veteran and just learning anything about Mistweaver and Shuffle. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. I am more than happy to answer any questions you might have. And that's it for me. Hope everyone has a fantastic rest of your day. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you later.